Hello, Eric King coming to you once again from the Nugget of Truth and the Shepherd's Way. This is going to be part two of, of our series called The Creative Ages. Once again, part two of what we call The Creative Ages. And I would ask you please watch part one because it sets the stage for this part that we're going to be talking about. And I have to say, out of all the lectures I've given, this one's going to contain pr probably, I'm pretty certain, the most extra, what we would call extra-biblical knowledge. Not directly found in the Bible. So Christians aren't commanded to believe this or asked to believe this. What we're doing here is we're putting a history of, uh, together based on our ancient Antiochian records and ancient Chaldean and Babylonian records and scientific records that we have in our ancient Antiochian library based on Sola Scriptura, based on what the Bible tells us. And it fills in a lot of gaps. Now, if you've watched uh, our part one of the Creative Ages, um, you'll, you'll see that we believe that in between, in Genesis chapter one, um, there is a, a gap there. It says, in the beginning God created. Now, we believe that's billions of years ago. The very next uh, verse there in the Hebrew, in our English Bibles, it says, and the earth was without form and void. But if you do a Hebrew word search on that, and other scholars such as Schofield and even way before him and other scholars uh, point out the fact that the actual transliteration of that word, in, in, and we have it documented in one of the earliest manuscripts on our website, but Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 actually, actually reads this way. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, period. Now, like I said, he created a perfect earth, perfect fiat. He spoke, boom, there it was. And it says that in the book of Job's, in the book of Job, um, God asks them, where were you when the sons of God shouted for joy when I created the earth? So this is not a seven-day creation thing here. This was an instantaneous creation of our planet. And then the verse 2 in Genesis says, and the earth was, which is actually that Hebrew word, which is uh, Hayah, or Hayah. It's actually Strong's, uh, if you look in your Strong's Dictionary, it's uh, um, in the Hebrew, it's word 1951, and it comes from the root of 1933. Uh, those are two words you can research on. You can go online and do other research regarding this issue, but it actually says, the earth became without form and void. Form there, uh, tuhu, uh, and, and empty, uh, is uh, bu buhu or bohu, tohu va buhu, which means the earth became without form and void. It, it wasn't God doesn't create anything without form and void, but something happened in between verses one and two of Genesis, and that's what we want to talk about today and give you what happened was there was a first what we call the first earth age before Adam and Eve and before the recreation of the earth. When we actually read. That is famously known as the six six day creation account. There, um, actually, the word create is is not used until we get up to the animals and humans. There, so it's God on the third day. Uh, um, you know, God begins to bring forth the sun again because the earth was covered without form and void. So, uh, God says in verse three. Then God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So everything, uh, the evening and the morning were the first day. Now the word day there is also the Hebrew word yom, and it, 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 it means contextually here a, 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 an, an amount of time, an unspecified amount of time, not a literal 24-hour day, and it's very important to understand that. And so God begins to bring forth that light, and then it says, um, then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the heavens and the waters. And we, we've talked about that in, the, in our first day, that God begins to um, open the clouds. And then God doesn't create uh, uh, the sun. Actually, the Hebrew says God br brings forth. The word bara or create is not used there. So it's, it's an account as if you were standing on the earth itself when it was without form and void and you begin to see the clouds part and you, and you start to see electrical storms and then finally you get into the third and fourth day and God brings forth the sun again. He lets it shine on the surface of the earth again. Again, bringing it out of what? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth became without form and void and darkness was upon the surface of the deep. It was a, coming out of that last 
ice age we had there 10,000 years ago. First 4,000 years of that, the, the ice began to melt. And then we have the literal creation of a Garden of Eden. And we have Adam and Eve placed in that Garden of Eden to be representatives of the human race. And we're going to find that in other studies that um, we believe on the sixth day or Yom, age of creation. We're talking here about the, the creative ages. On that age, uh, God created all the human races on that sixth day. And then he rested on that seventh day, which is liter a literal age, a period of time. And then after the seventh day, God puts Adam and Eve on the earth and puts them in a place called the Garden of Eden. And we know when they mess up, they're on the Garden of Eden. Then uh, 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 Cain is sent out of the Garden of Eden and he meets uh, pre-existing humans from the sixth day in the land of Nod and takes a wife from the land of Nod. Now this is, this is something that you need to understand. But what we're going to talk about here is what happened in between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, before the earth became without form and void. Now we read in Ezekiel that, that Lucifer was once in a place called the Garden of Eden and he was without sin. Now that couldn't have been during the time of Adam and Eve because during the time of Adam and Eve, Lucifer had already fallen and become Satan, the adversary or the fallen one. But we read in Ezekiel that um, 28 starting from verse 13 to 19, we read there was a time when there was an Eden on this earth where Lucifer was covered with every precious stone. He was in Eden, the garden of God, verse 13, Ezekiel 28, verse 13. He was covered with all this beauty. He was the anointed cherub. And uh, verse 15, while he was in this Eden, this first earth age, it says in verse 15, you, that is the devil, now the devil, but then Lucifer, you were perfect in all your ways from the day you were created. Until what? Until iniquity was found in you. Now, so when we talk about the first earth, we're talking about before the sixth day reconstruction of the earth. And we're talking about before uh, even the six day humans were created and before Adam and Eve was created. We're talking about the first earth and how it became without form and void. Something happened. So we're going to fill in that gap and we're going to use a lot of extra biblical knowledge here to do this. I'm going to be reading from a document that is uh, printed on our website under uh, Understanding the Planet Earth's Ancient Mysteries. There's one called the Earth Odyssey and there's another article there, um, the history of the true history of planet Earth. And that you can find this documentation there. So here's what we need to understand. Billions of years ago, God created a perfect earth and he put Lucifer and angels in charge of monitoring that earth. They sometimes are referred to, both the good and bad angels are referred to as the watchers. They were, they were, they were put in charge of our planet. In that sense, Lucifer became the ruler or the god of this world. And he's still called the god of this world after Adam and Eve forfeited the title deed and they fell into sin. Lucifer in the New Testament is still called the God of this world, though he is now in a fallen state. Now, when he was cast out of that paradisical heaven, he was confined to the two lower heavens, and we have uh, studies on the heavens in, in our lecture series you can find online here. But he was, he was cast out, and he was, he was confined to planet Earth and, and the second heaven, outer space. When we talk about the first heaven, we're talking about Earth's atmosphere, where the birds fly and the clouds and the wind blows. And so, and, the, and so that's the first heaven. And then outside of Earth's atmosphere is what we call the second heaven. That's the cosmos, outer space. So these fallen angels are confined both to outer space and Earth's atmosphere. They are no longer able to go to paradise, the third heaven, of which Paul was taken up in vision in the book of Corinthians. Paul says he was taken up to that third heaven and he saw things there which he was not allowed to speak about. Today we're going to be talking about that first earth. God created it. It was perfect. We read about this. We go to Isaiah chapter 45. And we have some hints of this time mentioned. These are parenthetical prophecies God puts in His Word. There, If you read Proverbs 1, it says we're to understand these riddles or these parenthetical prophecies that seem to be sometimes go out of context when God speaks like, for instance, when we just read Ezekiel 28, he's talking about a king there, and then it goes into likening that king to, to Lucifer, and God puts that, that hint there, that, 
that parable or that riddle there for us to study and understand time sequences of events. And to do that, we have to use the entire Bible. So here again, God puts a parenthetical uh, uh, verse in Isaiah chapter 45, starting at verse uh, 18. We read, For thus says Adonai, who created the heavens, who is God. Again, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So that was by fiat and it was perfect. Who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it uh, 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 in vain, without form and void. He did not create it without form and void. There, it, that Greek, uh, that, excuse me, that Hebrew word is the same word used there. It means waste. He didn't create it without form and void. He formed it to be inhabited by angelic beings. I am the Lord and there is no other. I have spoken in secret. I have not spoken in secret. So here God says, look at I want you to understand this. This is no secret. When I first created the earth and the angels shouted for joy, as we read in the book of Job, it was perfect. Now, when we go to Jeremiah chapter 4, we have another parenthetical prophecy that talks about something that happened during that first earth, which we, which we call the first earth, before it became without form and void. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 22, God says, for my people are foolish. That word right there can mean, uh, is uh, sottish. Uh, they're, not, they're not understanding what I'm trying to say, God says. For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children. And they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Verse 23, Jeremiah. I beheld the earth, and indeed it was without form and void. Now this is after Lucifer's Luciferian rebellion, which we're going to be talking about, and that earth now becomes what? Without form and void. Just like it we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Now that we read there properly that the earth became, not was, but the earth became without form and void. And here Jeremiah is seeing, seeing something that happened. He says, I, I beheld the earth, and indeed it was without form and void. And the heavens, they had no light. It was, they were covered with dark clouds. I beheld the mountains, indeed they trembled. That means there's plate tectonics going on, shifting, and we're going to talk about that. And all the hills moved back and forth. I beheld, and indeed there was no man. We're going to find that there were beings on that first earth before the six day humans and Adam and Eve, on that first earth, before it became without form and void. There were creatures there. I beheld, and indeed there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens had fled. Something happened. I beheld, and indeed, the fruitful land was a wilderness, and all its cities, cities, there were cities on that first earth, they had been broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. So, in verse 23 of Jeremiah, it says, I beheld the earth, and it was without form and void. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, I, the earth became without form and void. Something happened, and it's called the Luciferian Rebellion. Now, so we're going to go back to that first earth. We're going to take a journey. Take a journey with me here. Again, this information is not something that Christians have to believe in. This information has been taught in the ancient Antiochian Church of God, and it's in our ancient records. And I felt that it's important to share it with you here in our study of the second part of Creative Ages, part two. And then, and then in part three, we'll, we'll go into the, the six-day creation and all that. But this is a lot of information here that I want you to understand. Divine intelligence, God created our planet and solar system instantly. For this is what the Lord says, He who created the heavens. He is God who fashioned and made the earth. He founded it. He did not create it to be without form and void or empty in the Hebrew, but formed it to be inhabited. Isaiah 45 verse 18. So again, God doesn't ever create anything without form and void and darkness. We serve a God of light. Something happened. So in the beginning... Billions of years ago, the original earth was made complete and inhabitable. This happened at an unknown uh, time in the far distant past. So we could say that was the first dispensation of the first earth. We're going to cover six dispensations here of that first earth. That was the first one. It was created perfect. Then, second dispensation of the first earth. The first earth was originally one basic large land mass and one giant ocean of water. In other words, <clears throat> when we look at the map, you can see that Africa, 
fits pretty much well tied up into uh, the European continent there. And, and if you put all the land mass together, that's how originally the Earth was when it was created perfect. It was one land mass surrounded by a large ocean. On this first earth, Lucifer and many servant angels planned the government and shaped the planet's masses as they were involved in observing and taking care of micro-life. Again, Lucifer was a covering cherub and he was put in charge of this planet in the first earth. In the first earth, it was beautiful. These beings, that is Lucifer and those angels that were put in charge, the watchers, had access to planet Earth's surface. They had physical glorified bodies, but also had access to flying in Earth's atmosphere and even going into outer space. And the third heaven at first, before they were kicked out, which is the spiritual heaven. We put this very early period of our planet at about 1.4 billion years ago. Again, this is coming from ancient Antiochian records. We put this very early period of our planet about 4 billion, 1.4 1 billion years ago. So in this de second dispensation of the earth, the first earth, Lucifer was giving commands to um, angels to be in charge. The large ocean did in fact have a variety of ocean life in it on the first earth. The angelic beings at about 700 million years ago began to add the polar caps of our planet. They began to add the polar caps uh, to our planet. Now, all this is part of a, um, a caretaking that Lucifer was giving instruction to do to take care of this planet. So, 700 million years ago, uh, the polar caps were added to the planet. They actually experimented, that is, these angels, by first freezing the Earth, the entire surface of the planet. Our average Earth temperature at this time was around minus 40 degrees, with the ocean being a mile thick deep in ice. Now, this is all preparatory, preparatory to, to, to creating things that would be a different life form. And so the chemistry of the earth that was being manipulated uh, in stages in order to prepare it for, for a beautiful creation. Had Lucifer not fallen, <laughs> um, there would have been no sin and the earth would have continued to be beautified. Now, the third dispensation of the first earth, we say this. At around 550 million years ago, they experimented uh, by splitting the one large land continent apart and forming islands and other larger yet separate land masses. Remember, these angelic beings are not doing the creating, but they are certainly moving the fur furniture around of planet Earth, if you will. As they reshaped the land, they added changes to Earth's atmosphere, and this was also a time when God allowed many early life forms to appear. We're talking 550 million years ago. That's when the lands began to break apart, plate tectonics, to create different atmospheric geographical locations for many different life forms to be invested into the planet. Now, we're not talking about evolution. I want you to catch this. We do not teach evolution here. We teach divine creation. These creatures were created by God and put on that first earth. As they reshaped the land, they added changes to Earth's atmosphere, and this was also a time when God allowed many early life forms to appear. God created many living organisms and placed the entire planet in balance. God demonstrates that He is a God of relationship. We can see God in the things of creation. We rely on the trees to give oxygen and air. They rely on us to, to breathe out, to, to take the nutrients. What we breathe out goes back into the trees and so forth. The Bible states that God can be seen in the things of creation. We read that in the book of Romans. Angelic beings began to witness the enormous power of God. At this time also, our ozone layer was created to, to work as a UV ultraviolet shield. This early atmosphere was absolutely gorgeous. Now new land life species were created at mass levels. Intricate biological species of all shapes, sizes, and colors now inhabited a beautiful early first earth. Now again, this is before the six-day recreation. This is before Adam and Eve. This is before the earth became without form and void in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. It's at the first earth. We're talking here about this first earth and the dispensations of this first earth, which was lasted a long period of time. The angels, we can imagine, were learning about God's creation and, and allowed to participate in this. Now, the fourth dispensation of that first earth, at around 300 million years ago, they reshaped the land masses again. 
In other words, some more plate tectonic shifts were going on. Moved giant sections of the Earth around again. For the most part, this left the surface of our planet as mostly one large landmass again, as it was before, as it was originally, before the first shift. Different species were now placed in different environments. New and more intricate relationships on all levels were formed. In other words, they originally these animals were on different continents. Now they're all brought back together, and then they have to learn relationship. That's the idea here, around 300 million years ago. But the planet was united. Most all life forms were living together in one giant ocean and on one major large landmass with areas of different environments, including rich forest and the ponds of water, teeming with life. The angelic beings were in perfect relationship with divine intelligence. For 60 million years, the planet stayed in a consistent, peaceful state under these conditions. The angelic hosts, being the caretakers of the planet, learned and continued to shape and tend the planet. Intelligent beings in care of our planet began to mix and stir things made of matter together, a uh, sort of alchemy. They were allowed to experiment, forming all sorts of experimentations. Now, the fifth dispensation of that first Earth. At about 240 million years ago, the angelic beings began a new phase of governing our planet. They started a new project that was given them, but during this time, the Lucifer Rebellion began. We put the Lucifer Rebellion starting at about 240 million years ago on that first Earth age. Again, this is according to our ancient Antiochian records and research in our ancient Antiochian library. Lucifer, the leader and overseer of the planet, sinned. The Bible informs us that pride entered into him, and from then on he grew evil. He began to believe that he could govern the planet without, without the help of God. Now catch this, he even believed that he could genetically create better. In fact, many of our scholars speculate that Lucifer started experimenting with genetic manipulations and creations, something that God had originally forbid him to do. Think of that. He was full of pride. We read that in Isaiah too, that he was full of pride when he fell. He, he had gained so much knowledge as the as the God of this world, he had gained so much knowledge that it went to his head, so to speak, and he started to play God. At this time, dinosaurs had been created, yet the rebellion, after Lucifer rebelled, uh, it affected their creation. In other words, he was messing around with genetics and he shouldn't have done that. Distortion now entered the first earth. We have to realize that when we talk about dinosaurs, dinosaurs... The big dinosaurs and the huge dinosaur population did not exist during the six-day recreation of our planet and during Adam and Eve. They did not exist. There were some that large, uh, like me megalodons and such of this, and some other large creatures that still lived in the sea and some on the land. But when we talk about the overall dinosaur population, no. We're going to find that it was on the first Earth, but it was destroyed. As a matter of fact, if you go to Nebraska today, you can find hippos and, and animals that are that are from Africa, you can find them in Nebraska. How do you think they got in Nebraska? Well, we just read that at one time the land masses were all together. And, and we're going to find again a final separation occurs and these animals got broken up and eventually when Lucifer got cast down to earth, we're going to find that the smoke billowed up, covered the surface of the deep the, and the earth and the dinosaurs that were destroyed during that time. Note, during this time, the, the dinosaurs were on, on the first earth, and there were also human-type beings that now became isolated into clans. Now, these were not humans created after the image of God, like we get into the, when we get into the six-day recreation. But there were human-type beings that, that, that God did um, uh, have during that first earth. And they became isolated. Uh, when Lucifer fell. In other words, the angels that were monitoring these beings and helping these beings couldn't do it like they did anymore, and the genetics were screwed up, and it, things went really awry. Lucifer then began to isolate different species and races to try and control them. Again, these are human-type beings on that first earth. The angelic beings that joined in on the rebellion lost their once glorified bodies and lost their access into the third heaven or spiritual heaven. Lucifer and his angels were cast out of that third heaven. Now it is true that he was allowed to continue to go in certain periods of time and have meetings in that paradisical 
um, heaven, and we, that's uh, documented in the book of Job, but predominantly they were cast out, they lost their physical glorified bodies, and now they became spirit beings, fallen spirit beings. The angelic beings that joined in on the rebellion lost their once glorified bodies and lost their access into the third heaven or spiritual heaven. Instead, they were now confined to earth's atmosphere and outer space in spiritual bodies and they missed being able to have physical embodiment. Fighting on all levels began, including in the animal kingdom on earth. Now note, the fallen ones, even to this day, try and possess people because they miss their once glorified bodies. That's called demonic possession when that happens. There are still angelic beings from another class of angels, which we've covered in other studies and we're going to cover again, called the Nephilim, or the fallen ones. These were another class of angels right before Noah's flood that took on physical bodies and created, uh, had intercourse with human women, and I, this is this is kind of wild, but it, it's documented in scripture there in Genesis chapter 6, and, and they created an offspring, a hybrid called the Giborim in Hebrew, these were the giants. Some of these evil angels are being held in a spiritual prison called Tartarus, that's documented in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 and Jude chapter 6 and 7, or excuse me, Jude verses 6 and 7. They came before the flood, and sometime after the flood they came again, Numbers uh, chapter 13, verse 32 and 33 documents a second um, uh, Nephilim or Nephilim uh, in, in breeding was allowed, part of God's plan. And we're going to talk about some parts of God's plan we don't understand, but it's all for God's purpose. And so that's a side note, that there are other angels that fell um, during, uh, after the recreation of the earth during the time of Noah. Be that as it may. Angelic supernatural beings fought in the Great Rebellion. Finally, God said enough is enough, and threw one-third of the angelic host that joined Lucifer down from heaven in a ball of light, trapped in an asteroid the size of Mount Everest onto Earth. Now, some of our scholars say trapped in an asteroid. Now, um, even to this day, NASA has noticed some odd-shaped um, uh, asteroids or comets uh, coming outside of our solar system on a direct course uh, going around our sun collecting data and going back out and it's even hypothesized by NASA that these could be uh, what they would call extraterrestrial craft um, disguised as uh, natural objects but controlled by the fallen ones. Now here we believe that when Lucifer was finally cast out of the third heaven we believe a meeting went on there. God called him up there and said, because you've done this, you and you and you, one third of the angels and, and Lucifer, were put in this and they were cast down to earth in, in, a, in, a, in an object that was the size of Mount Everest. This happened 65 million years ago. So we put that final outcast of Lucifer on that first earth 65 million years ago. And this is when the earth becomes without form and void and darkness covers the surface of the deep. Once thrown down to earth, the impact created huge explosion, explosions and actually three large craters on earth. 70% of all the then known life became extinct, including the dinosaurs. Some early human type beings, however, surprisingly did in fact survive through this. And we're going to find that those those first early type human beings, the Neanderthal and Denisovans, actually were sticking around during the recreation of the earth. And actually, there's records that humans uh, interbred with some of these uh, species that had survived the first earth. We can properly document in our early ancient Antioch and library that the first, on the first earth there were in fact multiple races of human type beings before the spiritual war broke out. And just because some of these created beings had different sized brains does not mean they were created to be dumb. All shapes and sizes, some with incarnate angelic spirits in them, walk this planet of ours in that first earth age. The fossil record is proof of this. You must understand that even modern scientists now admit that they used to believe that the human family tree went Australopithecus begat Homo erectus, which begot Neanderthals, which begot us. But now modern science with DNA technology says that's no longer so. In other words, Neanderthals were not 
evolved. Homo erectus was not evolved. Australopithecus was not evolved. These were created beings. Again, we do not teach evolution. These were actually first earth creatures that were created. The very shape size that you can imagine. All of these early species came from the first earth. The story of creation and humans is far more complex and more intriguing than you could ever imagine. There is a hidden crater over 100 miles wide in Mexico, which extends into the ocean. It is a giant scar from the final blow that ended the spiritual battle of the first earth. This great explosion darkened the entire earth. At this time, two huge volcanoes erupted. Many of today's beautiful diamonds came out of these very immense volcanic eruptions. The, combined of, the, the combination of these events brought the extinction event to a great level. The sun was darkened. After 50 million years ago, surviving life from the Great Rebellion struggled to survive in a planet and an atmosphere now infected with the spiritual virus of sin. The first earth angelic homes and cities were completely destroyed. Again, we read about a vision of, that Jeremiah had of the destruction of this first earth. Jeremiah chapter 4, starting at verse 23. I beheld the earth, and indeed it was without form and void. In the heavens they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and indeed they trembled, and all the hills moved back and forth. I beheld, indeed, there was no more man or human-like beings. And all the birds of the heaven had fled. I beheld, and indeed, the fruitful land was a wilderness, and all its cities were broken down at the presence of the Lord by His fierce anger. We read about um, a very short sentence which describes this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth not was, again that Hebrew word is, and the earth became without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Though the original planet earth was made complete and inhabitable, now it had become a great mess. The very second verse of the Bible properly reads in the Hebrew, now the earth became without form became formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God was still here. So the original translation tells us that something happened in between verses 1 and 2 of Genesis, something that brought desolation to planet Earth, and that something was the Luciferian Rebellion. One last unorganized and chaotic shift in the Earth's plates happened also during this time, at that final rebellion but not as large as the previous times. The geographical earth plates shifted during this great rebellion, and many of the first earth cities and villages now lie beneath our oceans, which some of them are being found, actually. The earth literally became without form and void, and darkness covered the earth. Remember, we have scripture which confirms that Lucifer once walked in the Garden of Eden, and he was still without sin. He was here before this great destruction. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 13 through 15. Our planet's continental plates are still slowly shifting since the Great Rebellion. Yep, the planet is still moving. The sinful aftermath of this Great Rebellion is still being felt today. It is the curse of sin. After the Great Rebellion, Lucifer lost his name of true enlightenment, and now he was given the title Satan Adversary, also the Fallen One. It is Satan that is ultimately responsible for sin. Sin was here way before Adam and Eve. I want you to catch that. Sin was here way before Adam and Eve. Okay, in the final sixth dispensation of that first earth. So after this great destruction, the earth did have some surviving life. About 50 million years ago, the angelic beings had now become completely invisible. They had lost their glorified physical bodies. As far as biologically created life on planet Earth, it now had to learn to survive. The fallen angels did not have the physical control they, that they once had uh, used to have before the rebellion. Of course, God in His mercy always is in control and has His great angels keep the fallen ones in check with God's ultimate plan of the ages. There are spiritual laws, I want you to note this, there are spiritual laws that divine intelligence has put into place between the fallen ones and the rest of His creation. All is working out to fulfill the will of divine intelligence, to fulfill static truth, to fulfill the one unchanging plan of our sovereign God. 
Some of the early and now distorted life forms survived into a planet gone wrong. One humanoid, first Earth human types, was Neanderthal, the other, the Denisovan, but without the original physical care and guidance that they once received by the glorified angels, they must now turn animalistic and childlike. They were extremely vulnerable. God, of course, intervenes for ultimate protection and survival. Again, there is a spiritual management going on in our universe that we cannot see nor fully understand. 